Time now for the Mark Kotze Show, brought to you by Nest Betting. Love where you sleep. Check out their location in the Bay Area, or you go to nestbedding.com for all of your sleep needs, your mattress, your pillows, your sheets, you name it. We're in Seattle with the Skipper. How are you? I'm doing well, Tony. Coming off a, a really beautiful, nice off day here in Seattle, which if you've been to the Northwest, you know you don't get many days like that, but it was 75 and, and a little bit of a breeze, but it was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. That's rare. I mean, when you think of like a perfect day, there's no, there, there's nothing coming out of the sky, no type of water or misting or rain. I mean, that is, that is, wait, did you guys get golf in? What'd you guys do? We did. There was a, a group of us, uh, Bobby Crosby, Mike Aldretti, myself, and then a group of uh, one group of players that went out, uh, TJ McFarlane uh, kind of led the way in getting us out to uh, the golf club at Newcastle, which is uh Really uh, above Bellevue, up on the mountain kind of side, and uh, we had a full view of the city and the sound, and it was uh, it was a pretty spectacular day. Yeah, that's awesome. Absolutely beautiful. The Pacific Northwest. Let, let, let's talk about that double header. It was a long, long day, and the thing that I love the most, even though your team lost, it was like a heavyweight fight. It was like when we were kids watching heavyweights go 15 rounds pounding each other and no one no one wanted to go down until the final bell and they stopped it. I mean, just talk about a long day, that doubleheader and the way your team fought all day long. Yeah, you know, I mean, you mentioned we, we lost. We lost game two. We won game one, which, you know, after uh, the first two games of that series, we lost a heartbreaker on uh, a Monday night and then a day game on Tuesday, which was really unusual. Uh, after a night game Monday night to show up and not play well. Um, you know, we wanted to respond. We uh, uh, obviously came out that first game of the doubleheader, played really well, swung the bats good. We got good pitching uh, from from Sears and, and obviously from Miller to pitch the last two innings of the game to secure that win. You know, coming out of this game two, it's always hard to take both games of a doubleheader. Um, you know, we got down, we got behind, we kept battling, we kept fighting. We got it to within one run, uh, and then we were back down – by four and we got it to like two or whatnot. I mean, it, you're right. It was a heavyweight battle that, uh, you know, the last man standing kind of uh, mentality for our group, which after, you know, playing a two, two hour over two hour game prior to that game, having a 30 minute break and jumping back into another nine uh, was really impressive from, from the, the, just the, the grind mentality, the grit that this group showed uh, in game two, even though we, we fell one run short. And very impressed by you and all the different moves that you're making. I mean, you're talking now, you've been in uniform, you've been out on that field well over five hours. I mean, you had the early game, as you mentioned, then the break. And this was the second game was the longest game of the season. And you got all these players in a, what's it like to manage in a grind like that and still have to make these decisions that have to be spot on? Well, I mean, you never, you never lose that mindset. You never lose the mentality and staying focused, uh, you know, you owe that not just to the players, to yourself and, and to this organization, to the fan base, um, you know, that I care so much about and having their respect, um, you know, on a daily basis, which is putting the work in and being prepared. Uh, you know, we took our shot in the fifth inning with a couple matchups against their only lefty in the pin. Uh, you know, when we pinch hit Nevin uh, and then we pinch hit Davis and we pinch hit Davis for our, our starting catcher. But we added Tyler Soderstrom to the, the roster. He's out on first base. We've got Lang DHing. Um, you know, so there was a lot of versatility, a lot of moves that gave us an advantage and, uh, you know, doesn't always work out, right. You don't always get the result, but, uh, you gotta be prepared. And, and I think, uh, Darren Bush, myself, um, you know, we're locked in and, uh, we're locked in until the final out. And, uh, and, and that's the way our minds are set. And that's what we owe to the players as well. It's like Shay Langoliers has had a career already against the Texas Rangers. It's unbelievable his numbers, how much he has dominated his hometown team. Did you have a team like that, or did you have a, a teammate who just, there was this one opponent, you just absolutely, you saw them, and it was like going to an arcade. You were going to light them up like a pinball machine. Well, I think in looking back, like the one stadium uh, that I can really recall being very successful in was Cleveland's. I liked going there. I loved hitting there. Um, so I think Shea feels really good against the Rangers. And uh, obviously the results are there. Um, but it's it's weird because the timing of this series kind of just aligned with, you know, all the processes that Shea stuck with, um, all the work he's put in on his swing, um, you know, to be patient, to understand that, you know, the results will happen, um, you know, and then for them to show up 
you know, this this series against the Rangers to see the at bats. And, and Shea's had some good at bats. He's cut down uh, on his strikeouts for the most part. Um, you know, I think uh, we like the direction he's headed. And and again, like you said, I mean, he has had quite a season so far against the Rangers. When you look at him, you wouldn't say he's your best athlete. <laughs> but Shea Langoliers is probably your fastest player. That home run he hit that hit off the sweets is amazing. Is Shea Langoliers your fastest guy and your best athlete and he's your catcher? Well, you know the play. You know the answer. He's not our fastest guy because Ruiz is on the roster. So. Okay, yeah, yeah. Other uh, than Ruiz. But you know what? Shea Langoliers may run from home to first faster than Estre Ruiz. Like yeah. that's probably a proven. Um, you know, we could get that data. But in terms of just being athletic, like, yes, you wouldn't look at Shea first glance and say this kid's athletic, but what he does behind the plate, you know, how he blocks balls, um, his arm strength, obviously, you know, he can score on a, on a double in the gap from first. Like, you're right. He, he's a great athlete. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. He's a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, I, uh, in the next week or so, we're going to become baseball nerds and we're, di- we're diving into a lot of these analytics. And I- I'm showing that slug, slugging percentage more than on base right now in an era where it's hard to score runs is really, really important. You love how guys get on base, but you got a slug. And looking at Brent Rooker from New York to where we are today, his numbers are skyrocketed. It's not because he's walking. It's because he's hitting. He's hitting bombs. He's hitting doubles. He's hitting base hits. Just talk about Brent Rooker and what you've seen, and he's just become a slug monster. Yeah, you know, he actually has made a great adjustment with two strikes. Um, I don't know the numbers off the top of my head, but in talking with Darren Bush, you know, who's the director of hitting and also the bench coach, but, um, you know, Darren and, and Rook had a good conversation about two strikes and his approach and, and one little small minor adjustment that he made uh, has really helped him uh, cut down the strikeouts, but not eliminate the power, which, which is something we don't ever want to do. We don't want to take the power away from Rook. Um, and, and what he's done over the last 10 games is pretty remarkable as you talk about. His numbers from New York to where they are now, I mean, I know people don't want to talk batting average, but when you go from 200 to 277, that is a massive leap. 13 for his last 32, four homers, 406 over his last 10. So um, I'd say those are pretty good numbers. All right, you've got a long road trip coming up. I think that's always great for you guys to be up there in the Pacific North, the, the Pacific Northwest on, on the day off. Talk about this trip. You got three in Seattle, you got four in Houston. First time you're seeing both those teams in division. And then you're going to go up against, well, when we're taping this, a red hot Kansas City Royals team. Yeah, no, this this trip is no joke. Um, you know, we we went into last trip, but it was Cleveland, New York, Baltimore. Um, this trip in division is against, uh, you know, two teams that, that have, you know, pretty much been or finished one, two, three in the division over the last few years. So, uh, and been to the playoffs and, and all, obviously the Astros have been world series champions two years ago. So, uh, even though the Astros aren't playing well, they're getting back some of their key guys. You never want to, you never want to go into Houston thinking, oh, okay, they're down. You know, we got them. No, that's not the case. Like, uh, they've got a veteran laden team. Uh, you know, Jordan Alvarez went into New York. I think he hit four homers in three games. He hit one off the facade of the uh, upper deck, or, or that may have been um, Singleton. Yeah, Singleton. So, um, you know, Verlander's back in their rotation. They're, they're getting healthy. Um, you know, I think that uh, uh, a couple other of their starters might be back in the rotation as well. So, but here in Seattle, uh, this club's played well. They pitch. This club really pitches. So we're going to face some elite arms. Uh, we're going to see how our offense stacks up against it. Uh, we've been swinging the bats better over the last week. So, um, you know, anytime you come off an off day, you never know what you're going to get. 18 and 21 is where you sit right now. Tell us how you're feeling about your record and where your club is right now. Oh, I think we've uh, definitely performed really well. Um, you know, we've pitched, we've played good defense. Uh, we have to continue to do those things to stay successful, to stay competitive. Um, you know, that's the focus really is on the details. Um, this roster is still, we've gotten younger, uh, since the last time we talked, um, you know, with Soderstrom being here, Brett Harris being here, um, we're, we're tapping into some of, uh, some of the youth and, uh, you know, that's okay. It's a good thing. These kids are coming up and, uh, they're doing a good job. Um, so, you know, we know, we know where we're at. We want to obviously, uh, improve and, uh, we're going to focus on that every day. Does Sodi look a little different coming back up to you? 
He actually looks a little thinner um, in his uniform uh, from last season, which, uh, I mean, he's 22 years old. So uh, the swing he put on the ball on Wednesday, the oppo home run he hit, uh, when he swings at strikes, he barrels the baseball up. And that's, I mean, in general, you can say that about a lot of guys, but um, then again, like, he doesn't swing and miss in the zone. And and what he does is he expands the zone. He swings outside of the zone on pitches that he can put in play, um, you know, with weak contact. And that's really what we're focusing on with him is just trying to, to get him to swing at a strike. And when he does, he does damage. Are we going to see more of him at first base? We're going to mix him in while he's here. That's for sure. I don't know how long he's going to be here. Um, you know, again, our focus on these guys and their development process, if, if we have to, you know, bring them here, we will. Um, but that doesn't mean they're going to stay here by any means. Um, you know, they need to dominate triple a. And when I, when I say dominate, I mean, I mean, dominate, like, you know, we want guys that are leading the league or at least above league average in every category. Uh, and, and that's our focus on, on, you know, when we evaluate these players at triple a, we'd like to see that. But as you know, as, as, as well as anyone, sometimes there's necessity that happens that we need to bring them here and, and, uh, and they need to go out and, and, uh, and, you know, help this team in any way they can while they're here. Last one on this road trip, Max Schumann. I don't know about any roster moves, but Max Schumann right now is your shortstop because he is the only guy that's ever played shortstop in the big league. So h- how are you going to work that throughout the road trip? Because obviously you, you need at least two guys on the roster who comply. Well, Max is young. I mean, he's young. He's excited. But, yes, I, I've got a backup. I mean, Brett Harris can play a pretty good third base if you watched him over this last yeah. series. You know, he's young. He's going to make that – throwing air that just comes out of nowhere and you kind of look at him and, you know, Hey, what's going on. But um, you know, he's athletic enough to go over there and fill in if something happens to Max, but Max has got a great opportunity. This kid's a baseball player. You're going to like him the more you watch him. If you went in for a series, you wouldn't, and he, and he didn't perform, you'd be, well, what's he doing here? But if you saw him play shortstop game, one of the double header, the place he made, the range he has, the arm he's got, uh, and the at-bats he's given us. I mean, he's given us some quality at-bats. He's gotten on base. He takes a walk. He grinds with two strikes. Like, this kid's – this kid's uh, he's taking advantage of, of the, the situation that's, that he's fell in into. Did you get into anybody's pocket yesterday at the golf course? We got into the players' pockets, yes. The staff beat the players. So, um, it wasn't for, you know, a huge amount of money, but it was just nice to be able to go in that locker room and, and kind of, you know, peacock them. Yeah, I don't care if it's a dollar. If it's a dollar, the fact that if I'm taking yours and I'm not giving you mine, that's all that matters. Yeah, yeah, it was a fun day. So, all right, buddy, that's great right. stuff as usual. Have a good trip. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks, Tony. All right, that's the Mark Kotze show brought to you by NestBetting.com.